Hey everyone, welcome to my new series called the Ammo Training Academy. Now in this particular series, we're gonna be going over the step-by-step -step process to properly detail your car, but from the perspective of a beginner detailer. Now I gave myself a challenge in this series. I said, if I only had one hour of your time, meaning you, the viewer at home, what would I say, what would I do? How would I teach you how to be better than 90% of the driveway detailers out there? What I needed to do is to break down detailing into its core fundamentals. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in this series. And we also talk about the seven chapters. The first one is the master guide. Now this master guide is a free downloadable PDF on my website. Everything we're talking about in this series is being compressed into this one thing that you can print out and put in your garage. Chapter 102 is the core detailing principles. 103 is the essential detailing tools. This isn't like fun things to have or cool. I'm talking about the meat and potatoes of detailing. So this is a fun one. 104, essential car cleaning steps, protecting steps, the most common detailing mistakes. And then once you're done with the detail, how do you maintain it? So there's a whole lot of things that we need to talk about from the perspective of a beginner. We're gonna do a little bit of classroom work here and then we're gonna go downstairs and really show you uh, how to do this step-by-step -step process. So let's get started. Before we get started with my training system, a few quick notes to help you get the most out of watching this series. Number one, I highly encourage you to print out a copy of the master guide and have it in front of you as you're watching the following chapters. Understanding how and why this guide was designed the way that it was is critical to executing proper cleaning and protecting steps. Number two, remember this first series in the Ammo Training Academy is devoted to beginners with little to no knowledge of detailing and will not make you a pro overnight. We'll have an advanced and pro series in the future that'll cover more complex topics and techniques like paint correction and wet sanding. This series, however, will give you a strong foundation of detailing's core principles to get you started. And finally, number three, the chapters and their content will build in complexity as we progress through the series. To watch the entire series uninterrupted, go to my website and click on the training link to watch ad-free. If you wanna go back and focus on just one chapter at a time, we also have that available for you as well. To uncover the core fundamentals of detailing and to take you through the actual steps of cleaning and protecting your car, we first need to define what detailing means. We define detailing as bringing a vehicle back to its factory condition or better. And although this sounds straightforward and simple, the number of techniques, tools, and products are so confusing that a basic detail can quickly become overwhelming. But this is how you can begin to look through the fog and understand how powerful this master guide will be for you going forward. After boiling down and weeding out all the noise, four simple yet fundamental blocks are left behind. Number one is your core or your why, meaning what's the purpose for your detailing? The number two block is the sequence or the where, or in other words, what area of the car are you gonna detail and in what order? Number three is your method or your how, meaning what techniques are you gonna use when you're at your particular location of the vehicle to be detailed? And lastly, the fourth block is the rules. These rules will help prevent avoidable mistakes and potential injury to yourself. With this in mind, I rearranged the blocks vertically and built a master guide from these four fundamental principles, core, sequence, method, and rules. The core or your purpose for detailing is either to clean, protect, or correct the vehicle. If you think about it, almost every aspect of detailing a car encompasses at least one of these three purposes. However, because this is a beginner series, we're gonna be focusing our attention on the cleaning and protecting, not the correcting. Correcting is an advanced and pro-level technique that will be covered in our next series. If we're cleaning the car and we're protecting the car, in theory, we, do, we don't need to correct it. And that is a massive um, understanding that I think uh, a lot of beginners, that kind of goes over their head and it is so important. So if we do this correctly and, and uh, you know, sort of maintain the car, this, this we're gonna call the emergency room. You know, we don't want to go to the emergency room and correct it. So let's pretend for a second I'm the ER doctor in this weird scenario. Cars keep coming in every single day to the shop and they're messed up and I need to correct them like an ER doctor. So I go in there and I correct it and I do all the things and now they're perfect. I patch them all up and on the way out and I say, hey, Mr. Mrs., you need to do this, this, and this to be healthy, meaning in the ER doctor, you got to eat your, uh, you know, apples and exercise and do things right and then don't come see me again. That's kind of what I say to people that come in for detail. Hey, the car's looking good. We're gonna need to clean it and protect it properly. Let me go over the steps, which we're gonna do now. 
and so you don't come back and see me. So the whole purpose is you don't schedule appointments with an emergency room doctor. That's insane. You go there when you need it, but it's not like, hey, on Wednesday, I'm going to the emergency room. That's the same idea with correction. So that concept alone, if you, if you get anything out of this video, just clean it and protect it and correction is not something that you want to do. Block number two is the sequence or proper order in which to execute the cleaning and protecting. The order is engine, wheels, paint, interior, and then glass. This is the most effective and efficient way to move through your detail. Block number three is the method or proper technique used when you're at your location to be cleaned and protected, such as the engine, wheels, paint, and so on. First, you pre-rinse the location, you wash it, rinse it, and then dry it properly. This simple method is the foundation to safely cleaning your vehicle. Don't worry, we'll go over each step throughout the following chapters. For now, just get familiar with the layout of the master guide as you follow along. The fourth block is the rules. Now these rules govern how we approach each area of the car and the methods we use to clean and protect them. Follow the rules and avoid needless mistakes. Take a quick look at the rules before you start each new sequence. But I think it was important to kind of show you, hey, what did I do when I was thinking about building this master guide and breaking these things up? This concept alone in our next series here is gonna be the core detailing principles. Those combined with, hey, let's break this apart into its simplest form um, is really going to help you think about uh, going towards mastery if you want to or not, but you have to have the right foundation. So I think this particular part is either good for someone who's just a beginner or even you know, wants to be a pro. You got you to gotta learn the basic math before you start doing like hardcore arithmetic. Does that make sense? So uh, let's go into the core detailing principles. We got to go downstairs. This is about as much classroom stuff. Uh, you guys made it, this is good. We're gonna go downstairs and actually walk through some of the major concepts. If you keep them in your mind, detailing is gonna be pretty simple for you. Now, before I forget, this video is gonna be one full length episode, but I'm gonna release seven individual episodes in case you need to refer back to them after this video. This is chapter two in our Ammo Training Academy, the core detailing principles, where we're gonna change the way you think about detailing. Now, we need to do this downstairs in the garage. Let's get started. Core principle number one is dirt equals rocks. Now, what do I mean by that? If I were to take a microscope and put it on your dirty paint, you'd look at it and say, oh my God, it looks like huge rocks. Well, essentially that's what it is. So if you think of a massive rock like this, turns into a stone, that turns into a pebble, that turns into dirt and dust, that's what gets kicked up on your car. It's the same exact thing. So when I tell people this, they go like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, when you're dry wiping your paint or going like, oh, look at my paint or, or wiping it with a towel and you don't have lubrication, you're literally doing this across the paint. So if you wouldn't do that on your paint, don't dry wipe it. Principle number two is lubrication. Now that we know that dirt equals rocks on our paint and us wiping the paint improperly causes scratches, we have to introduce something called lubrication. Now, in my crazy brain, I would love to invent something called the paint vacuum. You put a vacuum on the paint and you could hypothetically pull off the dirt. Now, the point I'm trying to make is if this was a tiny little piece of dirt, if you were to take it and just pick it up like this, you're not gonna cause any scratching. But that doesn't work like that. Obviously, we have to wipe it. So to do that, we have to introduce lubrication in the form of water or drying agents. In this case, I'm gonna use this little bubble wrap as an example as a lubricant. What the lubricant does is it covers that rock and then it helps it roll off as you pick it up with the microfiber towel. So this is one of the most important concepts to remember, a principle that anytime you touch your paint, you have to have some type of lubrication in it to make sure that it doesn't scratch or put what I call love marks in your paint. Number three is clear coat is not forever. Clear coat is a layer of clear paint that covers the colored paint underneath it. This clear layer protects the paint from the sun's UV rays, which in turn keeps the color pigment looking deep and rich for longer. However, this hard, protective clear layer is very thin. So think of it like saran wrap on last night's dinner. It's very thin, but it does protect the underneath, meaning the pigment underneath. You have the clear coat on top and the pigment underneath. But if you compound it too much, or let's say you wipe it without lubrication, you're gonna wear it out and expose the pigment underneath. For the sake of demonstration, your clear coat is about as thick as this piece of paper. So properly maintaining it and protecting it will increase its longevity. Core detailing principle number four is cross-contamination. It's one of the most common mistakes we make. So I have my wheel bucket here and my wheel wash mitt. Now, if I'm cleaning the rim and I get brake dust all over it and then wipe it across the paint, 
obviously I'm gonna scratch the heck out of it. That's a very common cross-contamination problem. But the same thing happens with door jams or lower rocker panels. If you mix up the pads that you're using on the car, you're gonna damage the rest of the paint. So keep that in mind. Anything that you use for the wheels stays with the wheels. Anything you use for the paint stays with the paint and so on. Do not mix tools, otherwise your paint is gonna pay for it. Or to put it another way, I wouldn't use my toilet bowl brush and then clean my sink. That'd be pretty gross. Principle number five is the magic pill syndrome. That's the belief that you can put something on your paint once and never have to touch it again. Five, 10, 100 years, whatever it is, that sort of concept, that belief is wildly false. And it's actually quite dangerous to people like professionals in this industry, manufacturers, and of course, um, you know, beginners, it's, you know, who I'm talking to right now. You actually have to put effort in uh, to get something worthy out of it. Now, you're saying to yourself, hey, the point of this video is to compress all of this. You know, you wanna make things faster, more efficient, and create a better looking car. Yeah, okay, we can do things to kinda squeeze that down and just make it very strategic, very sniper-ish, you know, like perfect, you know, a perfect shot. And so uh, we've developed products along the way. So originally we had carnauba wax, then we had sealants, and then we have things called coatings. These are all of them are amazing, but there is nothing out there that just prevents you from, from doing uh, you know, putting it on once and never having to touch it. So I, I pulled this out. This is a, a you know a nasty little clear bra because I've been playing with it. But this is 13 mils thick, and I'm, I'm giving you this example. If this is 13 mils thick and it's still relatively thin, it's actually on the on my car right behind the camera. It'll last, let's say, on a race car. Let's call it a season. And then on a car like mine, where I go to the track every once in a while, it'll last two, three years. Depend, you know, the front will be kind of messed up more. But on a regular street car, it'll last five years. Why am I telling you this? Look how thick and strong this is, look. I can't even like pull it apart. And this is 13 mils thick. If you put some sort of wax sealant coating on your car, it's very, very thin. So logically thinking, it's not gonna make sense that it's gonna last 150 years. I'm, I'm being facetious, but you get the point. Um, so I don't wanna be down on products, obviously. I just think that misconception that you can just do something once and dust and dirt is not gonna then get on your car. It's sort of like saying, hey, I can pop this pill, but I'm not actually gonna have to do a, a proper routine and do the right workout and eat the right food so that I can have the output, have the look, have, you know, win the award, the Mr. Universe thing. Does that sort of make sense? So the bottom line is this, if something sounds too good to be true, like anything in life, it probably is. Just stick with a proper routine, follow this regimen, use quality products, use quality techniques, and you're gonna get a quality result. Just don't think that you're gonna just squeeze something on the car and wipe it on a few times and then you're done. So I put that as a core detailing principle number five because it is, it's so important and it's so much bigger than this. So anyways, uh, yeah, we're done with this. Now let's hop into the essential detailing tools. Pretty cool. One of my favorite rules of thumb is the 80-20 rule known as Pareto's Law, which explains 80% of the results come from 20% of the actions, or 80% of your sales come from 20% of your clients. But for us detailers, I say 80% of the cleaning comes from 20% of the tools. So which are the 20% that are critical to a proper detail? Okay, with the 20% rule in mind, here are the items that I recommend. Now, I split them up into three different categories. I have one-time purchases over here, I have consumable products, and then of course, car-specific cleaning products over here. So let's, let's start on this side. Now, we have a vacuum. Now, you're gonna buy a vacuum once every four or five years if you maintain it properly. One of the big things I, I sort of stress in training is I really like a crevice tool. It gets in between the seats, and it actually focuses all the suction in a, in a tight little area. They, they make other ones that are big, uh, you know, flat ones for carpet. I just, I don't personally prefer them. So make sure you get one of those. If you have a wet vac, that's great as well. Okay, now we have three buckets and we have stickers on them to designate which one's which. We have a wash and a rinse. So the wash, you're gonna, you know, put the soap in, the rinse is only gonna be water, and the wheels, of course, are the wheels. Now, this is a bigger concept, meaning uh, we talked about it before, no cross-contamination. You're sort of forcing yourself not to contaminate everything by having multiple buckets. I also prefer the Gamma Seal, which is uh, this black and, and red seal right here. You can screw it on and actually have uh, water tight. So if you live in an apartment or something like that and you wanna take water with you to a self-wash, you can tighten this up and tip it over and it's not gonna spill. So it's very, very handy. Now, one of the most important things is the grit guard. Hopefully most of you are familiar with it. This is a guard that goes on the bottom of the wash bucket and it keeps your wash mitt and everything off the bottom. Okay, you can see how much dirt I left one dirty for you and the dirt goes between these little uh, holes here and stays trapped because of these little fins. Um, so it's very, very important not to introduce or cross contaminate uh, a lot of dirt there. 
Some other things you're gonna need is a lug nut brush. And then we have the wheel woolly, the extra long wheel woolly. They make a, bu a bunch of different sizes, but this is essential. Remember, we're talking about the bare minimum. You can get, there's gotta be a million other tools that you can buy that are lots of fun, but we're talking about basic. So I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, how come you didn't say this? How come you didn't say that? We're talking about basic. So another uh, sort of one-time purchase, I mean, I go through these every couple of years, is a scrub pad you can use on the interior. We're gonna talk all about this in the next episode. We have an interior brush, right? Uh, we have a hose nozzle. Again, there's 50 different versions. I prefer the one that has rubber on the end and you can squeeze it like this. There's other ones where you can have the fire hose. I really don't prefer those because you have to use two hands to shut it off or turn it on. You have to hold it and then twist it. A lot of times I'll turn this on and be doing something at the same time so it's lubricating. So keep that in mind. I'm not a big fan of the fire hose ones. Then of course you're gonna need a hose of various length, whatever's appropriate for you. So yeah, this is kind of the, uh, the one-time purchase. Now, let's move over here. These are the consumable, meaning you're gonna have them for a while, but you may need to throw them away, specifically towels. Now, towels only last a certain amount of time, but if you care for them, they'll last a decent amount of time. But if I were to take this right now and wipe the wheel over there, it's gonna be shot. I can't use that on the paint anymore. So that's what I mean by consumable. You, it's a good thing to throw them away because you're only gonna do damage on the paint. Then we have glass towels over here. You should have six to 12 of those, uh, six to 12, if not more, of microfiber towels and then some throwaway, I call them terry towels. We're gonna to use in really junky areas like the engine and things like that. I highly recommend a clay bar. We're gonna talk at length. There's a lot of controversy on this, so, but you should have it, but we're gonna talk about it. Um, you need uh, some protection items like glasses, but specifically anything that touches your skin, you wanna be able to, to wear some gloves. And we have three different mitts. So I have a mitt here for the paint. Uh, you can see it's in a plastic bag. I like to keep it really clean. I have a mitt here for the wheels. And then I have a second mitt that I use for the paint, but the lower portions of it. Again, we're gonna talk about that. But right now, I just wanna get you the concept of the bare minimum. There's a, there's a million more tools that we can use, but we want the bare minimum. Then over here, of course, we have the car cleaning supplies, everything from the paint and the wheels, and then the protection zone over here, and of course, glass. We're gonna go into each one of these in depth. But overall, I wanted to give you an idea. It's not that much stuff that is the bare uh, basics. Um, and each one of these has probably 50 other tools that you can use that it's a different version of them. So this is when it starts to become a little bit complicated. Visit AmmoNYC.com. Click on the training button. Then on the left-hand side of the page, click the tool button for links to my recommended detailing tools. For all ammo formulas and supplies, click the shop button in the menu bar. In this chapter, we're gonna walk you through the actual cleaning steps while referring back to our one-page master guide. Have it in front of you for the next few minutes so you can hand scribble in notes as you see fit. Before we can get started cleaning, remember to always prepare your three buckets before water ever touches your car. You do this to avoid water drying on the paint as you hurry to fill your buckets with water and soap. As you can see in the rules section, number one is to fill up your wheels, wash, and rinse bucket before each section, so you might as well get it done now. That's one wash. That is absolutely disgusting. So that's one wash. This is one uh, uh, wash on the paint. And then this is the rinse bucket afterwards. Um, so I purposely left these so we could put it on film, but when we're done with the whole wash and at the end of this little series here, um, you're gonna wanna clean these before you get started. If you forget or you're in a rush or your kid needs you or whatever, fine, just leave them and wash them before. Like don't, don't put soap in here. The interesting thing is if I were to take the car soap here and pour it in, right, and all the suds would come out, you would actually attack the things that are in there right now, which is not what you wanna do. When you have the suds, when you put the, when the suds come out, they're going into the dirt and encapsulate that and carry it away. But if you're introducing from the very beginning more dirt, you're making the soaps ineffective or less effective. So keep that in mind. If you have dirty buckets or dirty wash mitts, you're already starting at like 70% effectiveness with, with the formulas. Hopefully that makes sense. So keep everything clean. Quickly rinse out the bucket with hose water and replace the grit guards. Then repeat the process quickly for any mitts, brushes, or woolies that may not have been cleaned after the last wash. If they're already clean, then start filling the buckets with the appropriate soap and or water. Okay, we have three clean buckets and clean tools. Now we're going to fill up the wheel bucket first. I have brute wheel soap. Now I, I have a difference between wheel soap and paint soap. This is very soft and gentle and it's not gonna remove any layers of protection while the brute soap is a little more harsh or strong, let's say, to fight all this um, brake dust that's here. So it's two separate things. Um, anyways, we're gonna take the wheel soap. We take three, one, two, 
three big squirts, put that down. Then I'm gonna take the paint soap. And what I do here is I do three big squirts, but I do one on the bottom of the bucket right here. And then I do one on the outside of the mitt. And then I actually do one on the inside of the mitt. Now it's kind of like a time release uh, plan here. And so what happens is when I'm washing it, not all the soap comes out at once. That's why I do that one. And the third one is just gonna be rinse water where we take our wash mitt once we're finished cleaning one section of it and we're gonna dunk that off. So right now, let's just fill these up and get them ready to go and start the car. Okay, now that our buckets are three quarters of the way full, let's go look at our list and figure out what's the next step. All right, so if we look on our sheet here, first thing is clean, which is exactly what we're doing. Sequence, first thing we're gonna start with on this side is the engine. So I'm gonna open up the hood and we're gonna pre-rinse with water. We can spray and clean with plum or all-purpose cleaner, depending on how dirty the engine is. And then we're gonna wash with Brute, which is our wheel bucket. Same idea, it's a very dirty area, so we can use our wheel bucket here. And we're gonna keep continuing going down this list. So like I said, I'm gonna keep coming back and referring to this just so we can get the training idea. As you get better and better, you, you don't need to come to this every single time, but uh, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna follow through so that by the end of it, you guys go, oh, okay, cool, I get what Larry was trying to do here. So open the engine, pre-rinse it. Before you get started with any section, take a quick look down to the rules section to make sure you adhere to the directions prior to possibly damaging the car or hurting yourself. In this case, make sure the engine is cool to warm, but not hot, and avoid soaking any part of the engine with water, especially the alternator or any other electrical units, and always wear protective gloves and glasses. You got the hood open right now, the car is off and it's cool to the touch. Clearly, we don't, we don't want to be cleaning anything with the engine running, it's very dangerous. Now, in this particular car, there's a ton of plastic, so I don't really need to cover anything, but if you kind of squeak back there, if you can see, you got the old Impala with the hood open, that's got an older engine, and if we were gonna clean that one, you're gonna have to put some tin foil, you're gonna have to put some plastic on the alternator and some of the exposed things, it's a very old car. So these new ones, you can hit them pretty well, and they're not gonna cause an issue with sparking and that kind of thing. So before you put the water on, Clean out some of the old leaves and junk and these edges here because if you get them wet, uh, they're gonna they're just a nightmare to clean out. So take a minute or two and get your hand in there, maybe a little brush. Uh, if you have compressed air, you can do that too. Uh, now we're gonna pre-rinse and you can see this is just after a few weeks of driving. Now a lot of you are gonna be saying, hey, do I need to clean the engine every time I wash my car or detail my car? The answer is no. If you look on your master guide, I suggest doing it every two to three months just to kind of keep up with it, a quick rinse, quick wipe down. The more you do it, the, the shorter period of time, uh, you know, it'll take you sort of like cutting the lawn. If you let the lawn grow for six months, it's gonna be a nightmare to cut it down. But if you cut it every week, it's not that big of a deal. Same sort of concept here. So first thing we're gonna do with our method is pre-rinse this down. The key here is when you're using your hose, you're gonna open it in wide. So if I were to shoot it out this way, if I hold it, it's got a narrow stream. That's really putting a lot of water in that area. Or if I go wide, it's kind of fanning it out. So you wanna do a fan motion here, right? So here we go. That's it, that's the pre-rinse you want right there. Just to get a little bit of lubrication, you can see some of the dirt is actually traveling down. See a little bit right there, it's just starting to move. And it's kind of go down, but it's, it's you're, not, you're not soaking it by any means. All right, you're gonna use your wheel bucket and the tools in the wheel bucket and take your plum wheel cleaner and you're like, wheel cleaner on here? It's got a lot of uh, detergent action on it that is gonna work well here. If your engine is super, super dirty, like again, the old Impala back there, you may wanna use a deg uh, degreaser. So just a few light squirts. Quickly agitate the crevices with your wheel brush and wheel woolly for the hard to reach areas, but do not allow the product to dry. If you have dirt over here and then I agitate it and I move it over here in suds, as soon as it dries, you basically took the dirt that was dry here you moved it over here. So you kind of didn't do anything except move the dirt from one location to the other. What do I mean by that? You got to keep it um, pre-rinsed if it's really, really hot. In this case, I haven't driven it all night, so it's cool. So you can see the suds are staying there. Same kind of concept on the paint. This whole time, the car would have just been sitting and, and drying, which is very, very not good. So don't, don't do that. So I'm going to take my hose. I'm going to open it again. Remember, this is, you don't want to use this. You want to use that, the fan motion. And what I mentioned earlier, remember the the hose where you can do that, like the fireman hose. I, that's why I don't like this because I can, I can manipulate this. I can go like this, wide, wide. I can go a little bit small. Otherwise you have to use two hands, kind of annoying. So we're gonna go in here nice and wide. And just kind of rinse it down. 
It's as simple as that. You, you don't want to go too, too nuts here. So that's about as far as I'd like to go with that. Now we're going to grab our terry towels and dry this off. Now, if you do have compressed air, that's going to be great. Or a master blaster, also amazing. But I didn't add them in the list because they're not what I consider 100% essential. They're really, really nice and really, really good. And I highly recommend them. Having said that, the point of this video is to get down to the bare minimum, the bare bones, and it just didn't make the cut as the absolute bare minimum. So you can use a terry towel, but if you take compressed air and a terry towel at the same time, you'll get through this in two seconds. Keep in mind that this is not a long process, maybe four to five minutes at most. You're simply maintaining the engine's appearance, and this should not be an all-day project, particularly in this beginner series. Finally, close the hood until the first latch catches, but not all the way. You'll need to get back under the hood at the end of the wash process, so don't make more work for yourself now. Next in our clean sequence are the wheels. Take a quick glance down to remember the rules. Always start and finish one wheel from beginning to end. Do not spray cleaners and let them sit on the other three wheels as you work on the fourth. If you did this, this will allow the cleaner to dry and potentially damage the wheel. Likewise, the wheel should not be hot and do not spray cleaners on rotors, especially if they're carbon ceramic. Rinse the rim, tire, and wheel well with hose water. The goal here is to knock off the majority of the heavy brake dust and dirt. Then reach into your previously filled wheel bucket and use the long wheel woolly starting at top dead center or 12 o'clock and work halfway around to the right. Once you're done, then start at the top again and work your way to the left. We do this to avoid bringing brake dust from the bottom up to the top because the flow of water will carry away most of the brake dust. There's no sense working over yourself. Next, use your lug nut brush to agitate the lug holes, valve stems, and tight spots on the rim. Then, use your designated wheel mitt to clean the rear of the rim spoke by curling your hand in the mitt, then quickly reach and wipe behind the spoke. Clean the face of the rim with your wheel mitt, and then lightly clean your tires as well. If your tire is extremely dirty, you may need a stiff bristle brush or scrub by hand with your wheel wash mitt. Otherwise, a quick wipe with your brush should be sufficient. And then immediately rinse the wheel, tire, and wheel well with your hose. You can leave your wheel wet for now and move to the next one and start the process over. If you notice in the master guide, I added the exhaust in this cleaning section. After the second wheel is done, you obviously have to move to the other side of the car to start wheel number three and four, but on the way there, you pass by the exhaust. Use the wheel bucket and tools to quickly clean the exhaust as well. Although the carbon buildup is considered contamination, it's far less damaging than the shards of brake dust, so the principle of cross-contamination does not apply here. But use your judgment based on the particular exhaust size, material, and shape. Be sure to finish wheels 3 and 4 after the exhaust and leave them rinsed or wet for now. We'll dry them after washing and drying the paint. The wheel cleaning process should not take more than 5 to 10 minutes depending on the intricacy and design of your rim and how much fun you're having cleaning the wheels. Washing and cleaning your wheels while listening to music can quickly consume an hour or two and if you're having fun then let your OCD loose and clean away. Just be sure to keep dunking your tools regularly to minimize any scratching. Okay, now that our wheels are rinsed, it's now time to rinse down the paint. But if you look down on your master guide all the way down at the bottom at the rules, you'll see Touch the paint, make sure it's cool to the touch you wanna to get out of the sun. So if you have that all taken care of, next thing is let's rinse it from the top down. And our goal here is to rinse off or knock off as much of the heavy dirt as possible. One of the reasons we do that is you, you want the soap to not have to fight something that it could have just easily been knocked off with the, with the hose. Kind of making it easier for your washing method and washing tools. So we're gonna to go top down, but the place you really wanna focus your energy on is the lower portion of the car. Typically, see where this line is all the way running across? This is where it really gets dirty, behind the front wheel and behind the back wheel. So sometimes I'll turn it from fan mode into a little bit more of a sniper mode to kind of knock off this stuff. So if you can hit off, you know, 70, 80% of it, it's just something you don't have to deal with during the wash. It's one less thing that can scratch the paint. Now, as you can see, I'm using a rubber hose and a rubber nozzle. Now, if you have a foam gun, if you have a pressure washer, these are great tools for this particular area uh, or section of what we're doing right now. But since this is a beginner section, uh, I'm going with the bare essentials, which is a hose and a nozzle. 
Now that the car is rinsed, we've actually lubricated it at the same time, which is really important. We're now going to wash it in what's called the top-down method. Now, a lot of you are saying, yeah, yeah, I know the top-down method, but we're gonna add a little step here to kind of minimize the amount of potential scratching you can do. So the first thing is we're gonna take our wash mitt, right? We're gonna dunk it in our, our water, put it up on top. Now, the purpose here is we're gonna do half of the roof because we can't really reach it. But if you have a shorter car, you can probably do you know three quarters of the roof. So we're gonna go back. Now the goal here is not to, you don't see me scrubbing like this. You don't need to necessarily scrub. You're just trying to create enough agitation where you can pick up any dirt on, on the roof, right? So I'm gonna go back in, go to my water, make sure anything is knocked off. I'll take a quick look at it, making sure there's no rocks or something I picked up or a little leaf or a branch or something. Then from here, you're gonna do half the windshield. Now this is an important sequence. So we did half the roof, half the windshield. We're gonna go back in quickly. Rinse it off, there's really nothing there. And now I'm gonna do half the hood, right? Notice I am not touching the front of the car and I'm not touching the lower parts yet, I'll show you. Then we're gonna come over here, we're gonna hit the glass, you can hit the mirror too. You can flip your, your uh, wash mitt for the fresh side. So now, go back, oh, go back into the water and get some soap, we'll leave that there for a second. So right now I've done half of this, half the glass, half the hood. Now I've done this section. Now I'm gonna repeat it on this section here. But notice, we're not gonna to go to the lower part of the car. So I'm not touching this behind the wheel. It's very, very dirty. I'm gonna come like this. Do your best not to go uh, and scrub. You're not scrubbing anything. I'm, I'm barely touching, enough so it doesn't fall off the car. So I'm not pushing. So now, and notice how I didn't really go over myself a whole lot. I'll push it, put it back in the water, wring it out. I'll look at it. There's nothing really in there to pick off and I'll leave it in there for now. Okay, so at this point I've done half of the car. Did half the roof, half the glass, half the hood. I haven't touched the front. I've done all the glass here and half the door. And I did not do the lower panel here, the lower rocker or the trunk or the rear of the car. Those are the hot spot, dirty areas. So what I'm gonna do is rinse this down and repeat the same process just on the other side. So now that both top sides of the car have been done, but not the lower parts, we're gonna first start on the front of the car, but we're gonna switch. Remember we have two wash mitts in here? We're gonna switch. Take this one, because I don't like to get my other one really dirty. I'm gonna start at the top. Remember, we've already done the hood. Come down, let that lubrication fall down, and just kind of agitate anything. I, again, I cannot emphasize, I'm not pushing. I'm just barely letting these little fingers just grab any bugs and guts and something I don't want on the rest of the paint. And then we're gonna go into our rinse bucket, which is over here. I need to get, bring that over here. See, this is real time. Take that, just wring it out and make sure there's nothing big. That's one of the big issues our uh, big problems that we run into is if you do something on the paint, you pick it up, you do it nice, it gets stuck in here, you go back in, you don't actually see it, and it's like a little branch or something, and then you go back in, and that's when you scratch your paint. So just a little FYI. Come in here, do this. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is don't use the same wash mitt for all the super dirty areas because it just contaminates everything in the basically scratches the heck out of your car for no reason. All right, so I'm gonna go back in the rinse, take the soap. Now I'm gonna go to this portion right here. Now this is the super, super dirty area. Again, that's why I use a different mitt. You can pick any one you want. This one just happens to be skinny enough where I can use it in this tight area. Come down here, I don't know, one lower one. You can see some extra stuff on there. I don't know if you can see that in the light. See it all right here? I'll go in, kind of wring that out a little bit. Now we'll go to the back of the car. Now the back of the car abnormally has a lot of uh, exhaust soot. And again, you got the back of the car. There's a, a weird airflow back here. I'm sure some sort of engineering or physics person can tell me, but a lot of junk goes on the back glass in this back section. And uh, sometimes you do need to clay this. Uh, over time. But basically I'm going to take the same wash mitt. I'll start at the top and I do squeeze. Watch my hand right here. I'm going to squeeze 
I squeeze and pull it along. And look at all the work that's getting done without me actually doing anything. See how it's, it's dripping off onto the ground? So again, the less touching I do, rinse it off, dunk it back in my soap, and then I can come back in here, give it a, a light uh, wash. Now I think people, when they're washing their car, they think they're like scrubbing clothes or cleaning dishes or something where they're just hammering the paint. I can't emphasize enough to you that I'm holding this wash mitt enough so it doesn't fall down. That's basically, I'm, I'm barely holding, I'm going like this, you know, metaphorically speaking, I'm going like this, right? So don't put too much pressure. And if you protect it, which we're about to do in the next section, you protect it properly, it, the, the dirt is just gonna kind of roll off, but it's not gonna just not exist like we talked about in the, uh, the core detailing principles. It's still gonna be there, sorry. <laughs> so this is kind of getting a little grimy now. Oops, so go into the rinse, squeeze that out. That looks pretty good. Now come in here, just do the sides. A lot of times I'll go in, like I said, I'll squeeze a little bit just to get the, it to run down. See, now it's doing work for you without you touching it. This is when the foam gun really works well, and we can, we're gonna talk about that in the advanced series. All right, I wanna make a quick point before we move on to the next subject. This section I've already wiped, right? I'm gonna do it again just for camera purposes. So I just wipe this again. Now with me agitating this and all the little dirt getting trapped in these bubbles, right? Me going back and scrubbing it number two, scrubbing it number three, and scrubbing it number four. Two, three, and four were completely useless wipes, and that's all you did was increase the chance of potentially scratching the paint or the glass or the, the, the tail light here, whatever. It, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. So my point is, if you wipe across like this one time, that's it. That's all you need to agitate if, if the car is protected the right way. You doing this is not actually doing anything but hurting or potentially hurting your paint. So keep that in mind. One wipe and you're done. Okay, some lower parts of the car, like right around here, you can see it needs to be wiped a little bit more. And I just said earlier, hey, you don't wanna sit there scrubbing it. Okay, sometimes you need to go one, more than once, twice, maybe three times, just to kind of get in there. And a technique that you can use is, of course, you're still gonna use this mitt, have it absolutely soaking. You see there's tons of water. But at the same time, you can take a hose and lightly spray it down while you're doing it. This is really gonna help lubricate that spot and help you remove it. If you can see right there, putting a little bit more pressure down and it removes it, but you're adding so much more lubrication that you're sort of kind of negating any chance of it being scratched at the same time. So if you have a spot, usually behind the front wheel or around here behind the back tire, you have that little bit of grease or grime that just doesn't come off with one or two strokes. I'm being reasonable here, like this, this makes sense, okay, fine. Then introduce even more lubrication. Remember, everything has to do with lubrication. Another quick point I wanna make is this is, this. I think, I guess I'm getting worried. Some people are gonna look at it and say, hey, Larry, that's, that's insane. Looks like you were doing so many different steps. In reality, I'm not doing that many steps. I'm just saying, hey, when you do something, do it in this particular order. It'll take you five minutes to kind of think about it and say, all right, yeah, that makes sense. And then do it from then on. How good your car looks, it really depends on how you do this process. Meaning when you're removing the dirt, remember that dream of mine where I could put like a vacuum on the car and kind of pull the dirt off? It doesn't work that way. We actually have to wipe it off. This is the make or break moment. So if you say, no, I'm not doing that, Larry, you're insane. I'm just gonna go up there, grab a mitt, wash it down. I'll use it for the wheels, use this one. I'll use a towel, I don't care. Okay, fine, you may get the short-term game, but you're gonna get a long-term loss with that. What do I mean? The paint is gonna be scratched little bit by little bit by little bit. I call those love marks. And those love marks add up, add up. And then if you put two hypothetical cars that are exactly the same side by side with two different methods, you'd be like, why does this car look better after 10, 15 washes than this one? Well, this guy saved a bunch of time up front and was like, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to sit here and watch this long-winded explanation. I, I got it. I got it. But if, if and he doesn't have it, because what happens is when he goes to look at his car and he brings it into the emergency room, meaning me, a pro, I go, oh, oh, I can see that you haven't washed it properly. So this kind of cycle i really want to try to get on camera and put into words that it's really not crazy for me to be doing these things if if 
you care about your paint long term. If you don't, then wash it any hell you want and that's cool. But if you got this far through the video, you care about how your paint looks. So uh, I just wanted to emphasize that because I was feeling a little self-conscious like, hey, maybe this is so many steps. And then I'm thinking to myself, no, it's not that many steps. If you, it, It's not that big of a deal. If you just want to do it right, this is the, the correct way to do it. So anyways, add lubrication, use the methods, wash it this way, rinse it down. Now we got to go into drying. I think a lot of people think of washing as this many steps. Drying is even more important in some cases than actually uh, than washing. So let's get into that. Okay, with the car out of direct sunlight, now we just moved it up the driveway a little bit. You can pull it inside the garage. Anything you can do to just minimize the amount of pounding sun will help you because it's going to dry too fast. This is the probably the biggest part of this entire series is drying the car properly. This is the most overlooked aspect of cleaning a car. We use 50 different soaps, 100 different wash mitts, all these techniques, power washes, foam guns, and they're all amazing. And we do that to lubricate the dirt off. But we sort of don't think about the lubrication process during the drying phase. So I'll give you a quick uh, example here. When you're, wa when you're drying this now, just it sitting out in this dust, it's gonna collect a little bit of dirt. Plus, there's no car ever in the history of any wash ever, even if you spent 10 hours washing it, there's still gonna be a little bit of dirt left over. Why is that relevant? When you're, when you're wiping it down afterwards, you're basically wiping that dirt back into the car. So traditional ways of doing it, meaning chamois and water blades or beach towels, they're not designed to pick up and hold uh, dirt or wax or anything in. Microfiber towels are, this, this is probably the number one invention in the last 20 years of, of detailing. The chamois is designed to absorb the water, meaning it just soaks up the water, but it doesn't pick up any dirt. Plus, you don't wash the chamois. Like when I'm done with this in five minutes, it goes right in the wash. You don't wash your chamois, you don't wash your water blades. Does that make sense? So this concept is, if you master this at the very minimum, you're gonna save years on the life of your paint. So here's the technique. Microfiber towel, like I said, it picks up uh, contaminants really well. We all know that, there's no arguments. But it doesn't pick up water well for whatever reason. To get around that, what you do is you take a hose and you, and you rinse it down. You get it just a little bit damp, All right? Once you get it damp, you wring it out. So now it's just barely wet. And for whatever reason, a damp microfiber towel, look at that, I mean, just picks up water. It just attracts water, so it's brilliant. So it, 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 hits, it checks that one box, the one box of, hey, you know, if there's anything on the paint, how can I pick it up? Remember we talked about it before with like a little vacuum invention, meaning like just pick up the water, uh, pick up the dirt. The microfiber towel will do that, chamois do not. Now, how do I, keeping with my theory, how do I lubricate the drying process? Now for that, I have a, prog a product that we came up with called Hydrate Paint Moisturizer. Now it's very, very thick and viscous, but basically you spray it on, you goop it on, see it's uh, blue. There it is, see it? Once you spray that on there, see how thick that is? You kind of just spread it around a little bit. Now you're gonna take your towel, which is folded in fours. I'm barely touching the paint. Again, we're gonna repeat that same process, meaning half the roof, half the glass, half the hood. You're gonna go that same process we did in the washing. So I'm gonna to come to you. So I'll go right here, lay it down. Now we just washed the car. So we're gonna see, I, I spin it around. See how I'm barely touching? And you don't need to make it this dramatic. Like I go really, really fast. It takes me five minutes to do this. We'll turn it around and see if we found anything. I go back in, we look. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Nothing really dripped on the car or, or fell from you know, the sky or the tree or whatever. You wring it out and then you add another quick skirt. You just look at everything, make sure there's nothing in there. See that? See how it comes out where it's not like spray waxy? It's very thick. That's what you want. Get it in there. Now we're gonna go this low like we did before, right? You can go right over glass if you want. Now I wanna show you on the hood. So let's go to the hood over here. So you're gonna take this, you're gonna do one or two squirts. Again, super thick. Lay it down, wipe it. Now if you look, you can see there's a little bit of a streak. You see that right there? That's what you want. That's the lubrication working right there. So you just wipe it over again, and that streak is gonna get absorbed into the paint, into the pores of the paint. You're basically adding lubrication and some protection. And while doing that, you're gonna see in the towel, like here's a perfect example. Oh, look, another one. Here, I'll lay this down just for demonstration. This is a perfectly clean towel and I just washed it like crazy. Look, a little bit of something must have caught, I must have caught in the seam or something I didn't wash effectively. Now, if you had done that with a chamois and run over that, you'd literally just be rolling that over the paint and scratching. So this alone, this technique of drying your car with a microfiber towel, changed the way your car looks. It's, it's one of the best things I think that's come out in a long time. So 
repeat the same exact process all the way around the car, and that's how you dry it. With the paint dry, it's now time to dry the wet wheels with a hydrate method and a different microfiber towel that will only be used on the wheels and not the paint. Much the same idea as the tiny dirt spots left on the paint, I promise you the wheels will have a missed spot. Be prepared to see black streaks on your microfiber towel, so designate it as your wheel and door jam towel going forward. Keep in mind, wheels tend to scratch very easily because of the brake dust, so avoid dry wiping as much as possible. Quickly dab dry the rubber tires and wheel wells with a terry towel, then use a terry towel to wipe the kick panel underneath and sides of the door. If you forget to dry the underneath of your door, the next time you close it, the water that's there will splash up onto your once dry door jams, collect dust while you're driving, and be annoyingly dirty the next time you open the door. Honestly, for me, it's just super annoying to clean a car perfectly, then forget one spot that you see every time you get in and out of your car. It makes me nuts. So spend five seconds now to avoid grinding your teeth later. With all the doors open from cleaning the jams, make sure to remove the rubber and carpet floor mats while you're there to save an extra step. Be sure to avoid throwing the carpets in a leftover puddle from your previous wash and just keep them to the side for now. Next, put all the rubber mats together on the ground and squeeze your foam wash mitt over the mats to fill the grooves with soap. Then, use your wheel brush to agitate the dirt, rinse, and quickly dry with a terry cloth before leaning them up against the wall and out of direct sunlight. If you notice in our rules section on the master guide, direct sunlight may cause the rubber to discolor, and don't ever add dressing to the floor mats or pedals for safety concerns. Now the paint and the wheels are perfectly cleaned and dried, now it's time to work on the interior. But because this is a Sunday wash and we're not doing a full blown 25 hour detail, we're not going to shampoo the headliner, shampoo the carpets and the seats, we're not doing this on a regular basis. But what I do encourage you to do is go inside, kind of take a peek around, see if there's any drips or spills or something that may have happened since the last time you looked at the interior. And in particular, if you find something on the carpet or the cloth, you're going to go in with some shag uh, fabric cleaner and a little brush and a microfiber towel. You're gonna to squirt some of this on there, agitate it with the brush, and scoop it up with the microfiber towel. Now, if that doesn't work, you can go in with a scrub pad and scrub that area. So let me pull you in and show you how it works. Okay, because this is a beginner series and because we're simply cleaning and protecting, clearly I'm not gonna be breaking out a shampoo machine and start wet vacuuming the upholstery on a Sunday wash. Instead, I encourage you to quickly look around for any drips or spills in your carpet, Alcantara, or cloth seats if you have them. If so, use a few squirts of shag fabric cleaner and an interior brush to agitate the stain or blemish. Then immediately blot dry with a microfiber towel. If the stain persists, however, use a scrub pad and repeat the process again. The key to cleaning interior stains is to get at them as quickly as possible, so spot cleaning on your weekly or bi-weekly wash can be a lifesaver. Next, vacuum the interior by starting on the driver's side closest to the center console. There's always fun stuff jammed in this crevice. Then work your way back towards the door, looking underneath the seat, not only for dirt, but for baseball, tennis ball, softball, or water bottles that can slide under your pedals under heavy braking. This is actually way more common than you might think, so avoid it if you can during this process. Once the footwell is done, vacuum the seats by laying down the seat back to be able to vacuum between the seat bottom and the seat back crevice. Then, use your finger to spread open the seat bolsters to allow the vacuum crevice tool to get in between the seams. Now this may sound insignificant, but over time, dirt will get trapped in this area and cause the stitching to break down and wear out as you get in and out of the car under the weight and friction of your body. So at the very least, clean out the driver's side bolster closest to the door. I only recommend using the thin crevice tool as the flathead or wide body nozzles are not effective at getting into the small spots, plus the increased size actually decreases the amount of suctioning power compared to a narrow orifice. Once the front area is done, push the seat forward and vacuum from the middle of the car to the door, then the seats and so on and work your way around the car. Then do the trunk, the passenger rear and the passenger front. This process should not take more than 10 or 15 minutes if you maintain a weekly or bi-weekly regimen. Next, on any leather, plastic or vinyl, lightly spray ammo lather on a microfiber towel and quickly wipe the area. 
For most of the interior material, this is really just a healthy dusting to remove the grease from your hand and accumulated dead skin cells, especially on the steering wheel. If a stain is found, use the interior brush or scrub pad with lather and gently agitate the material until the lather is built, then quickly wipe it away before it dries. Again, this is 5 to 10 minutes at most during a maintenance wash. All right, come here, let me give you a real world example. My wife just came home, so I figured I'd show you guys. This is the 2009 Subaru Outback. We've had it since 2009. And naturally, my wife wanted <laughs> tan, I'll call it white interior. Take a look at that. That's me doing it, I wanna say maybe every three weeks, maybe every month, because she's always out and traveling and doing stuff and rock climbing. And if you keep this, I'm, why am I showing you this? This is white interior and we've had it for, what is that, eight, nine years? Yeah. Eight years doing math quick on camera uh, and it looks pretty good and then back here we have a new addition a, a baby so and it's still if you look back here it, it looks it looks good to me and it's a tan interior the other thing I just noticed while we we're talking on camera there's a spot right where she sits right there that I need to get out but you know I'm gonna go over right now with some shag touch up a little bit I'm, I just wanted to show you this because look it's not the cleanest thing in the world I have to clean it next in uh, probably a couple days this weekend but if you follow the right routine and just kind of touch it up as you go, even tan slash white interior after eight years and a baby looks pretty good. Okay, here's a perfect example. See this little spot right here? So I'm gonna take a little bit of shag, shake it up, put it on that spot. Let's sit for a second. I'm gonna go straight to the scrub pad. You can use a brush, but my experience tells me a scrub pad is probably gonna be better for this little coffee stain. We're gonna go in there. Then right after that, we go in. Now we just need to let that dry, but you can see that coffee stain is gone. The purpose of me showing you this is if you find a little spot, it takes 20 seconds. That probably even took less than 20 seconds for me to clean that out. Now it's good to go. Give that a few minutes, maybe an hour or whatever. It'll dry and the car you're prolonging the life of the car. It's the same idea I mentioned before, cutting the grass. You don't let the grass grow for six months and then go cut it. It's a nightmare. You cut it every week. Same kind of idea with the car. And this is like the perfect example. Eight years, white interior, wife and a baby. Yikes. Okay, so area five in our sequence is of course the glass. That's the last thing you wanna to touch. Now, the glass causes a bunch of issues and we all know that cleaning it is a huge pain in the butt. And if you think about it logically, there's three or four reasons why it's such a pain in the butt. One, you're looking through it, so it's glass, and there's a smudge here, you're gonna constantly see it in your eyesight. Number two is it's the face of your car. And when you're driving, you're gonna be getting the grease and the exhaust and all the stuff that's on the road. That makes sense. The third one is a little bit of a weird one where you have plastic in your dashboard. As the sun heats it up, it releases gases and it sticks to the inside. And we've all done that. We kind of wipe it like, what is this yellow gunk? That's kind of what, what's happening on the inside of the glass, usually with uh, newer cars. But to get around this, uh, we do a couple of different things. And uh, one of them is a three towel method. And the three towel method, uh, you are scooping up a lot of the grease that's on the glass. Now, let me give you a quick example. If I were to take a cup of water and drink it and everything is great, and I take one little drop of motor oil in there, that glass is now contaminated. That same concept we use for glass towels. So if you take a clean glass towel, pretend it's on my hand right now, and I wipe this grease like this, that towel, this side, is now contaminated. You can't wipe this area over here, you're only gonna spread it. So that kind of um, thought process, I think, escapes a lot of people, and that's why we, we do more circles, and we push harder, and we rub in the corner, and we're, trying, and we're basically just spreading that oil around the car. So the three towel method sort of prevents that. I'm gonna show you that right now. Step number one sounds pretty simple. That's to make sure that you put gloves on. A lot of guys have really dirty hands because they're cleaning their car and then they wipe their hands on the towel and they use the towel to clean the glass. There again, you're putting contamination on it. So make sure you put gloves on or wash your hands. Now, the three towel method, very, very important. Now we have the first towel here. I leave them on my shoulder because I don't like to lay them on the paint either because we just, you know, there, there may be wax on the paint, there may be water on the paint. Again, contamination is the key to success with glass. The first towel here, this is what I call the throwaway towel. So right now, if you look in this, these edges here, we'll pull it in a second, there's lots of black stuff and maybe a little bit of leaves or something that we missed. And when we're gonna work with our second towel, which is the glass towel, you're gonna contaminate it. So this purpose of this one here is to literally spray just thick 
get it in the edges and you're going to want to just wipe as much as you can. Now the glass isn't going to be pretty at this point. You're really using this, like I say, as a throwaway towel. You want to pick up and, and catch the edges and get all the, see that right there? You want to get all that black. The reason that you're doing that is your second towel, the very fancy and beautiful and kind of expensive towel that's made. This one is a waffle weave for, for glass, which is a lower pile microfiber. You don't want this one to get black streaks on it or get some big smudge that was already there. So you've already wiped once, right? A really quick wipe. The second one, you're gonna hit with your glass cleaner again, right? You're gonna take your nice glass towel back and forth, right? Overlapping, you can go this direction as well. Now, notice there's no black streaks on it. So I'm pretty confident nothing has been contaminated, right? I take my third towel immediately, doing it a little bit slower on camera. I put this one on my shoulder, Immediately afterwards, I take my clean microfiber towel and just do light circles. The key here is do it a little bit faster than I just did, again, we're on camera. And you're gonna wanna pick up any leftover um, water from the second towel. Now, the reason you do that is that leftover water that dries, that causes uh, water marks or streaks or things like that. Now, the, the, the way that I do it is, first I do half the glass, then I do half the glass on the outside. I love having nice fresh towels for the outside of the glass. And then I work my way around and I'll do, on this side, I'll do the outside of the glass, the inside of the glass, the outside of the glass, inside of the glass, the rear, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Then we're gonna go to the inside of the glass, which is a totally different thing. Now, if your glass is really, really dirty, you may go through maybe one or two sets of these. But I can guarantee you when you work on the inside of the glass, you got to start all over again because we're going to do a little bit uh, of a different technique and you're going to need fresh new towels because the inside of glass is always disgusting. So let's do that. All right, I'm sure by now you guys are saying, the three towel method, are you crazy? You know how much more time that takes? In reality, you're actually shrinking the amount of time to clean glass properly. So the three towel method is brilliant. So this is the one that we used before, um, and what we're doing is putting that on the floor. We're done with that. So I'm repeating it, and you can see I have all new towels right here. And the reason we're doing that is the interior glass is a beast of its own, and these steps are really uh, the fastest way to clean it properly as opposed to just wiping around. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to add a little step in between, or I should say ahead of the three method, the three towel method. The first one is we have rubbing alcohol here. Now I've popped this off and I put it in this one. I've had this one for a long time. It's 50% water and 50% rubbing alcohol or, or isopropyl alcohol. So let's put that to the side. So if you do a mix, you mix it up like this. What this is going to do is degrease the glass first. You're going to use two, you know, two methods for that. If it's halfway decent, you're know, like not too bad. You can just spray it on here because you don't want to spray it on the on the glass itself. The mist will come down, and actually, uh, on some uh, uh, dashboards like this, you'll actually get uh, discoloration. So don't do that. Or if it's really bad, you can put it in your scrub pad and scrub it. So this section over here is particularly bad. So what I'm going to do is take my cleaner. You can see I'm just barely pushing it out here. Okay, put that down on the old towels. Now I'm gonna take this, and you can see my hands like this. You're gonna hold it, and you're gonna flip upside down. That's the reason we come in from the passenger side here. So you're gonna put your hand down here, lean in, because if we did it from this side, we'd be stuck with the, with the steering wheel, obviously. So come in, you turn it upside down, and spin. You see that? Look at all that stuff coming off. That is a degreaser, and this is okay. Remember, the first uh, time you do this, it's not gonna look pretty. Uh, the first pass. That's why we call it a throwaway towel. You're really just picking up all the grease that's left over on the glass. So now I'm cutting through it pretty hard right now, which is great. I'm letting the degreaser do its job. See all that right there? It's fighting. If you remember, there was streaks right here. Actually, I can see it. That degreaser is chewing it up right now. So I'll put the scrub pad down. I'll take my throwaway towel. You're just picking up all the leftover grease. I'm going to go down. I'm this is just a 
quick, what we call like a mow down pasture, just picking up. So I'm gonna roll this over. And we're gonna pick up the grease again. Oh, you can see it, you can, you can feel it. I don't know if you can even hear it, it's sticky. The interior glass is just a nightmare. I'd rather polish the entire car than do the interior glass. All right, so now I've picked up the grease. All right, so I'm gonna leave that there. Second one, we're gonna go our towel method now. Instead of spraying it on the glass, again, you really don't want glass cleaner on here. You're just gonna spray a little bit here. Now the goal here is to regulate the amount of cleaner. When we're doing the three method, the three towel method on the rest of the glass around the car, it's really about how much, how fast does that towel get uh, full of water. If you have too much glass cleaner in there, you're gonna cause streaking. So it's kind of, you're kind of regulating that. Okay, so that's the good one. Now quickly, take your other 350 GSM microfiber towel, and now you're just buffing it off. Now you're just cleaning off the last little section. And again, I know a lot of you are saying, man, that seems like a lot of work. Believe me, if you try to take a shortcut here, it's gonna totally burn you. You're gonna be chasing grease around forever. All right, so that's half the glass. Look at that, that is, that's absolutely perfect. Now you're gonna repeat that step right here, and you can still use uh, the same towel. It really depends on how greasy the inside of the glass is, but that's the technique for doing the glass, the outside first, and you're gonna totally focus on the inside separately. Separate towels, clean. You're gonna add in your first uh, method. Again, 50% water, 50% isopropyl alcohol. It could be 70 or 90%. This is 91, it's fine. And then you can keep this forever on your shelf. And every time you do the inside of the glass, this, this, this guy comes out all the time. It's one of my favorite tools. Do the inside and you're all set. But as we all know, glass is a huge pain in the butt, but if you use this method, you'll be in good shape. Okay, now that we've cleaned the car properly and we've dried the car properly, you spot cleaned the inside and we did all the glass in the three towel method. Now all this should probably take an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how crazy you wanna be. So now that it's clean, we have to protect it. Okay, the car is now clean, but it's not protected. Protecting it means adding a sacrificial layer between the clear coat and the outside environment, sort of like putting on a jacket when you go outside. To keep us consistent, let's go back to the one-page master guide. We'll be working from the protect side going upwards. First is the engine. Add ammo mud dressing to the black plastic with a foam applicator pad. Once you're satisfied with the coverage, wipe it down with an old microfiber towel to prevent dust from sticking to it if you happen to go for a drive before it dries. As you get more comfortable and advanced with the cleaning and protecting process, you could have added this step immediately after the cleaning phase and then just closed the hood, but for simplicity, we're doing it now. Please take notice of the recommended application frequencies as these are just merely suggestions. Feel free to increase and decrease as you see fit. Now, let's protect the wheels with Ammo Gelee. This is a goopy product designed to protect your rims and make cleaning them in the future much easier. On the master guide, you'll see I mentioned adding gelee every two to three months, but this will vary based on how much you drive, how hard you drive, and of course, the process in which you maintain the wheels in between the application process. The cleaning process we just went through earlier will not remove gelee, but every few weeks of cleaning and heating up and cooling down will require it to be reapplied for maximum protection. As with any detailing process, make sure to have your gloves on and be sure to have a microfiber towel handy before you start this process. First, scoop just a little bit into your palm, then spread it around for even distribution. With your gloves covered in gelee, work your hands into the crevices of the rim until every area is covered. I prefer to do two rims at a time and allow three to four minutes of dry time. All right, so after two or three minutes, you'll notice the, the gelee actually turns a bit clear. At this particular point, you know that it's settled onto the uh, rim and it's ready to be taken off. You take your microfiber towel in fours and you really just kind of get in there and clean it up. Now at this point, your, your rims should be really clean because we already, we washed them of course, and then we dried them uh, with hydrate and they're clean. So you can see there's no like black stuff coming off, but again, you don't want to use this uh, particular towel on the paint ever again. So I think I mentioned it earlier, but you really wanna designate the towels. You have towels for windows, you have towels for just the paint, you have towels for the lower regions of the car, including uh, the rim, so keep that in mind. All right, if you're asking yourself, do I need to do this every single week, Larry? The answer is no, relax, you're all good. 
I would say if you look on your uh, master guide, it's gonna be every two to three months, generally speaking, but sometimes I do it once a week if I'm going to a show or I came back from the track. It really depends, but uh, on every wash, what I'll be doing is washing the wheels, of course, and then drying with hydrate. That you do have to do um, pretty much every week or every other week or whenever you wash it, but adding gelée is really dependent on uh, the usage of the car, so don't panic. Once all the wheels are protected, I then add a layer of ammo mud tire dressing to the rubber and wheel wells if they're plastic. Mud is a medium shine product that does not sling. First, apply mud to the applicator pad and squeeze it for even distribution. Then, massage the formula into the pores of the rubber in a side-by-side -side and up-and-down motion. Keep in mind, if you cake on mud and it doesn't get rubbed in properly, especially around the tire emblems, you may create a sling situation, so don't just haphazardly slap it on. You must massage it in and then give it five minutes to dry. Repeat this process on all four tires. If you happen to have black plastic trim like my Ford here, then I use the same pad to coat this area as I walk to the next rim. It's super quick and not an all-day procedure. Now that the car is perfectly clean, we're gonna need to protect it. And protecting it is like putting a big jacket on before you go outside in winter, that kind of concept. Before we can go through those steps, we have to talk about something that's a bit controversial. I don't even know how to bring up the subject, and that's clay. Now, in the next series, meaning Advanced and Pro, we're gonna go into clay at extreme depth. But in the next chapter, we're gonna talk about the common detailing mistakes, and this is one of them. Um, and I'll give you the brief overview, but essentially you have things in your paint. If you feel your paint and you hear it rough and you feel a little bumps in your hand, that means you have contamination. Contamination is the same idea, you know me and my analogies. Uh, you have blackheads on your nose, right? And then you put that strip on your nose and you peel it off and the blackheads come off. That's the same kind of idea with clay. When you rub the clay with lubrication across your paint, you're actually peeling up the things that are jammed or embedded into the clear coat. And the reason you wanna do that is if you're gonna put protection on it, I mean, you're gonna put the jacket on it, you don't wanna have you know, uh, contaminants sticking out, right? They're not gonna, it's not gonna go in well. It's gonna be sticking out and pushing the, the wax out of it. So this was kind of hard for me to explain, saying, hey, how do I get a beginner to think about this? So clay is useful when the car feels uh, rough, but you don't wanna do it on a regular basis, meaning you don't wanna go to the emergency room if you don't want to or have to. Clay is kind of like in that emergency room uh, sort of thing. It's a fantastic tool, but only use it when it's rough and before you put on protection. So let me show you how to use it really, really quickly. You're going to take a bit of spray wax. You're going to lubricate that. You're going to lubricate the clay. I put it into a bit of a hamburger shape. It looks like this originally. That's why they call it a clay bar. It looks like a bar. You're going to take that, flip it over, and you're going to rub side to side. Again, I'm going to put links on this video to show you two or three or four videos of me just clang and going through the whole process. But in general, I'm using speed right here, friction, but I'm not pushing, I'm not using lots of pressure. What that's gonna do is pick up all the contaminants in the paint and make it, see these little dots in there? It's gonna make it so it's nice and smooth. Now that it's nice and smooth, what's gonna happen is when I put the, the wax on or the sealant or the coating, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, it's actually gonna we took the contaminants out, it's actually gonna to stick to the clear coat as opposed to just being pushed off by the contaminants. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is a beginner video, so I'm just giving you a little bit of the information. It's a very good tool, but you're not gonna use it all the time. Um, and we're gonna talk more about it in the next series. So with that in mind, now let's put on our coatings, then we're gonna put on our sealant, and then we're gonna put on our wax, and the car is gonna look amazing. Protecting the paint is the most talked about process on forums, podcasts, and videos, but now I'm hoping you see there's so much more that goes into the car prior to even thinking about protecting it. Now let's step back for a second and think about protection as having multiple layers on top of each other. The first layer is your foundation, or we'll call it the thick fleece. It protects the body underneath. Then over it, you put a windbreaker. It's much thinner, but it's strong against the outdoor elements. To watch the entire video of how and why I created Ammo Reflex Foundation Coat, visit my video section on the website. Take Reflex out of the box and give it an even mix, no hard shaking. Next, prime your foam applicator pad extremely well as this is critical to smooth coverage and application. Prime the applicator until you can see a visible sheen on the pad. Then apply the product to the paint in overlapping motions. You should be able to get about one to two panels covered before you need to remove it. 
Once you apply Reflex, give it about two to three minutes and you're gonna remove it with a microfiber towel and complete the entire car. I encourage you to do two coats of that. It's gonna make a really thick, strong foundation. Give it another hour to cure, and then afterwards you're gonna put something over it, what I call like a windbreaker on top of your North Face jacket, and that is a paint sealant like this one here. This is skin defense seal. You're gonna put it on your applicator like this. You're gonna butterfly it, which is to squeeze it like this. See how it kinda looks like a butterfly? And then you're going to apply it in the same uh, motions that you did before. Now, the difference between ammo skin and reflex is you don't want to hit any uh, black areas, uh, trim, things like that. Sealants don't like trim, so keep that part in mind. We're going to talk about that in some of the common detailing mistakes, but you're going to apply it in the same fashion. You're going to go uh, in overlapping motions. You can even do cross pattern or cross hatch, they call it. We're going to do the same thing. You're going to do one panel at a time. This is very thick and very strong, so it cures uh, pretty quickly, and then once it once it's totally dry, you're going to take uh, a clean microfiber towel, one that hasn't been used on Reflex. I have a lot of red towels, and what's going to happen is as this dries, I'll try to speed that up for you on camera, it'll start to turn a bit white. You're going to come in there, and you're going to break the surface tension just with a little bit of a circle, and then once you cut through, you'll feel it. It'll start to slide much easier. And you're going to flip it over and keep rotating the towel. So you may go through one or two towels. Uh, during this process. But what this is doing is it's putting a quick uh, layer on top of the reflex. Now, if you think about it, reflex and skin, they're both layerable. So when you layer these things on top of each other, you, it's like when you go outside, you have a North Face jacket, you have the fleece underneath, you have the, uh, you know, the water resistant or the rain resistant shell on top. That's that same kind of uh, concept. So that's what we do here on cars to protect the paint or what I like to call the skin of the car. Once done, the paint will be extremely shiny. If possible, pull it out into the sun and double check your work by changing the angle of your eye. In other words, get down and look at the paint from a different angle in the sun. I'm 100% sure there's going to be a missed spot somewhere. Right here you can see I missed a little spot when you're removing, when I removed it with the microfiber towel, it happens to everybody. It's just like washing. You're always going to miss a spot. You're always going to miss a spot when you remove it. So the way to get that off is now this is pretty hard on the paint and it's dried. So you're going to use ammo spit spray wax. You're going to leave it on there for, give it 10, 15 seconds to kind of let that soak in there and it'll loosen it up a little bit. Then you're going to take a microfiber towel and just kind of scoop it off. Now it's going to be a little sticky because it's, uh, it dried and that's what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be adhering uh, to the layers of the paint or underneath this like we just did was reflex. So it's sticking to the reflex right now. And there you go. It just, it took it right off. Now, if you did it without spit, it'd just be a little bit harder to kind of grind off. And obviously you don't want to do any grinding on your paint at this point. So add a little bit of lubrication. You're good to go. Walk around the rest of the car, find the spots that you missed. And I guarantee you, you are, which is totally normal. Use a little bit of spit, wipe it off. Looks good and move on. If you're looking at your master guide, you may be asking yourself, what is cream and when would I use it? Ammo cream is a carnauba wax. This type of wax is organic, meaning it comes from the earth naturally. Brazilian wax, which is the most common form, comes from a tree in, well, you guessed it, Brazil. The wax grows on the trees to protect the leaf from the intense sun at the equator. It, of course, eventually gets processed with many other forms of solvents, oils, and other waxes until it reaches our cars, but the point I'm trying to make is that it has its limitations because it comes organically. Meaning, it doesn't last as long as sealants, like skin, or coatings, like reflex. But what it does have is an incredibly wet look that's hard to deny. The other attribute is, it's incredibly easy to put on and remove. I can quickly wax this car or the Porsche in just a few minutes right before I leave for a drive. Okay, here's another analogy to help you think about how these layers work with each other. Think of the reflex foundation coat as your underwear. It's the protection that covers the body of your car. Then, on top of your underwear, we add a layer of ammo skin. Think of this like your tuxedo. It looks great and it protects the reflex underneath. The cream, however, in this weird analogy, is the flower in your lapel. It's really, really pretty and draws your eye to it, but it doesn't last very long. But who cares? That's not the purpose of it. I think if you go into this with the understanding that that is the purpose of the layers, you'll have a great appreciation for the layering process and, subsequently, the shine and protection it offers. Lastly, if your car happens to have leather seats, use Ammo Mousse to moisturize and protect them. Prime a new foam applicator pad with Ammo Mousse until it's evenly distributed. 
Next, massage the moisturizer into the leather with medium downward pressure and let the product soak in for two minutes before buffing off with a dry microfiber towel. As you do this, look for discolorations in the leather and add more mousse in areas that seem dull or dry. Reapply every few months depending on the age of the leather, usage, and environmental considerations such as heat or sun exposure. Now that you understand how to use the master guide and we've gone through one complete cycle of cleaning and protecting, the next step is going to be talking about the most common detailing mistakes we go through during these methods and so you can squash them before they ever happen. There are a ton of common detailing mistakes that can easily be avoided. The number one in my mind is protecting your skin. You see in a lot of my videos I'm wearing black gloves and they come in a box like this and you can get a couple hundred for, I don't know, 10 bucks and keep them in your cabinets over here and you're good to go. So I think a lot of people just jump in and they're all excited, hey, I wanna clean my car, but really you need to protect yourself. You can wear eye protection as well. Foot protection, meaning a lot of people will wash their car and it's 90 degrees outside and they're wearing shorts and sandals. Again, that's not a great idea. It has really nothing to do with the car chemical, it's just chemicals in general. So think of this as a rule of thumb. If you're not gonna take a product, meaning anything underneath your sink, it doesn't matter what it is, and you're not gonna drink it, same idea, then don't put it on your skin. So just protect yourself as much as humanly possible. Um, and it's just a smart, safe way to move forward, especially detailing. So keep that uh, in mind as you're continuing. Automotive clay is a huge source of confusion and thus creates a lot of mistakes when we're detailing our car. Confusion point number one is this. When you have scratches on your paint, people tend to think that clay is going to remove them. That is not true, that is false. So if you have a deep scratch or a medium scratch or even a light scratch on your car, it's not gonna be removed with clay. That is a massive point of confusion that I get a lot of emails on. The second one would be this theory or this thought that, hey, when I'm cleaning my car, maintaining my car, or detailing my car, I must use clay. That is also false, meaning if you just close your eyes and say, hey, on this car that I haven't seen, I haven't touched, and I haven't played with before, I'm gonna automatically have to clay it. That concept is false, why? This is a tool, it's like an emergency room. You don't wanna to go to it all the time, but when you need it, it's fantastic. I will make this point. Clay is unbelievably helpful to a pro, to a beginner, anyone, when you need it. So I wanna be very clear on that point because if you use it too often and you use it without lubrication, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and some quick ways you can use it in uh, the next chapter. But if you use it too often, you're gonna cause scratching in it because it is an abrasive. Just my finger wiping across the paint is considered an abrasive. This is technically uh, an abrasive as well. So keep those points in mind that uh, this bit of confusion uh, will create a lot of mistakes in detailing. Mistake number three is using an all-purpose cleaner on the interior. APCs, or all-purpose cleaners, typically leave the fibers in a high pH state after the cleaning process. This residue can make the fibers stiff and crusty while setting the stain permanently in the fibers. If you happen to use APC and it does dry, the next time you get in the car with wet shoes, it actually reactivates the cleaner, then the cleaner cleans your dirty shoes and is scrubbed clean by the carpet, creating more stains. The bottom line is this, a good rule of thumb is to keep APCs out of your interior. Common detailing mistake number four is accidentally applying sealants and waxes to your black trim. This will discolor the black plastic and require heavy cleaning and possible black dye to remove. Simply apply masking tape to the sensitive areas or stay one inch away during the wax application. One of my favorite mistakes I see at gas stations around the country is pulling your vacuum hose through the vehicle to reach the other side. The vacuum hose is always on the ground and usually rolling around in water or driveway grease, collects dirt, and then is rubbed against the side of the seat as it's being pulled through the car. A common mistake when washing your car is to substitute dish soap for car soap. Now, a lot of the beginners are gonna say, yeah, no, we've heard of that before, but I think I've seen some instances where we can use dish soap, and that, that is true. You can, you can mix these 50-50 if you want to strip off all the wax, all the old, dead, nasty stuff that's on your paint before you're gonna apply something like Reflex or before you're gonna compound your paint. But again, from the beginner perspective, you do not wanna use this in a pinch because you do not have car soap. And I'll tell you the short explanation why. When you're washing dishes, let's say lasagna dinner, you have fats and oils, what they call lipids on, on the dish. So you use this to remove the lipids. And ever you see the commercial where you squeeze the plate and it goes, Rrr! 
it makes that noise, that means it's clean. You don't want to do that on paint. Why? Because we've put lipids, we put fats, we put uh, waxes and coatings and things. We want to keep that nice and hydrophobic. So hopefully you get that little difference. You can be uh, that much smarter than your next door neighbor when you see him washing the, your, the car with dish soap. Say, no, don't do that. Number seven is washing your detail towels incorrectly. Detailing towels are pretty much my number one detailing tool, so caring for them properly is essential. Never wash them with other clothes or towels because the microfiber will collect the lint and become useless. Always use a liquid detergent, not a powder, because any undissolved powder could scratch the paint, and dry the towels separately from clothes on low heat. If you happen to use high heat, it'll actually singe the hooks, causing them to curl over and not pick anything up, defeating their useful life. Washing in direct sunlight can cause a lot of extra work because the product itself is drying prematurely on the paint, leaving it unlubricated during the wipe. And as you know by now, wiping with little to no lubrication will cause scratching. Washing your car in early morning or late afternoon is usually the safest time to work outdoors. Number 9 is dry wiping the paint. Touching the paint without proper lubrication is worse than actually not touching it at all. Your hand is an abrasive, so wiping your hand across the paint is going to scratch it. Unless there's an emergency like a bird poo on your paint, just leave the dust and dirt alone until you can wipe, clean, and wash it properly with water as a lubricant. Cleaning your wheels last is not only inefficient, it's potentially dangerous to your paint. So if you do clean your wheels last, that inherently means you have to clean the paint first. If, however, you wash the paint first, you must dry your paint immediately to avoid watermarks. However, if you dry your paint after the wash, then you rinse your wheels down and clean them, you inevitably splash your paint with water and have to wipe it again and again. This is not only inefficient, it will actually add to the time it takes to complete a car wash. Always do your wheels first. And finally, the car duster. This tool is not suitable for safely picking up the contaminants because no lubricants are used in the process. Instead, it's dragged across the paint, creating love marks or fine scratches. Here are three quick reminders of mistakes we've already covered in previous chapters, but still must be avoided. One, don't use chamois, beach towels, or water blades to dry your paint. Two, most people get excited about a shiny car, but they forget to clean their tools before cleaning their car. Make sure your buckets, grit guards, wash mitts, and brushes are thoroughly washed out before you jump right into a job. And number three, cross-contamination. Don't forget this. Do not mix tools, buckets, or applicators during the cleaning or protecting process. Now at this point, your car is totally clean and totally protected, and it looks spectacular. So the next step is, how do we maintain it going forward? Clearly, I just cleaned this car and we're on camera, so I can't necessarily do this one. But for the next step, we're gonna work on the Ammo 964. It's right over here. Okay, just so we're on the same page, what we're calling a detail is what we did on the edge over there, which is cleaning and protecting the car. We did not correct it. I know we talked about that at the very beginning of the video, but it's very important at this point. So now that we've done that, we're gonna use this as an example. So this car was clean and protected maybe three, four weeks ago, right? And I had some afternoon, I had a Sunday, I spent a bunch of time, it was great. Now, on a weekly basis, I maintain it. Then I maintain it, then maybe two more, two more weeks, I'll clean and protect it again. So conceptually understand that. So that's where we are right now. So the next step is uh, a, a thing I call the hydrate trick. Um, and a lot of you have seen this, but for beginners, this is a really important concept. What we're gonna do is rinse the car down and then I'm going to dry it with hydrate. That's my maintenance. So what we're gonna do in this particular one, uh, I encourage you to do is the hydrate trick plus washing the wheels. So we're first gonna wash the wheels, then we're gonna rinse down the car just with water, then we're gonna make our towels damp, put ammo hydrate on it, dry the car, that's it. You walk away, you're done. That's kind of the maintenance part that I'm talking about. That's the trick. So I just wanna be very clear. It's not every week you're doing what we just did on camera for this last entire video. You're just maintaining it quickly, maintaining it quickly, maintaining it quickly, and then every month or two or three, depending on what you want, then you can go through that whole process we just did. Does that make sense? So let's hop in and go through the actual steps. This idea of determining whether the car needs a full wash with soap or simply a rinse down with hydrate is clearly somewhat subjective and will take into consideration the color of the car and how recently it was protected. In this scenario, it's probably unnecessary to break out all of your buckets and soaps to remove dust from the paint. Likewise, it's a waste of product to cover the entire vehicle in emergency spray wax to remove the dust safely. 
Instead, I want to introduce everyone to the Hydrate Method. It's the fastest, safest, and shiniest way to clean your car if, if it does not require a full wash. But if in this scenario you detailed the car on the weekend and then drove it 100 miles in the rain on Monday down a dirt road, then guess what? You're going to have to do a full wash. Hopefully you get my point. Now that we spent a few minutes cleaning the wheels, we noticed that they weren't really that dirty. It's just a nice way to touch them up really fast. Uh, we're going to rinse down the paint as I'm doing right now. What I'm literally doing is pushing off the dust. Now that's the determining factor. If I'm doing this, and I can still see caked on mud. Well, then you're going to have to wash the car. That's a logical progression. But in this case, you know, I just did the car. I went out for a few rides here and there and I want it to look spectacular. I'm going to quickly rinse it down. Okay, now the car has been totally rinsed down. All the dust is gone. There's really no dirt left. So the next step you're going to do is remove the standing water. It's the same idea as what we did in the beginning with the clean and protect, meaning that full process we did. Anytime you're washing the car, anytime you're touching the car, anytime you're drying the car, we have to add lubrication. That's my big word, right? So now we're going to lubricate it during the uh, drying process. Of course, we're going to use ammo hydrate and a damp microfiber towel. Like we did before, fold it into fours. Take your, uh, you, you know, your hose here. Quickly rinse it off. Take it, wring out the excess water. <clears throat> okay, now we have a damp microfiber towel. Put a little hydrate. You may be asking yourself, hey, what's the difference between this and a full wash? Well, typically the wheels aren't gonna be as dirty. See, I, I mean, I clean those in two seconds. That wasn't like a full cleaning because it didn't really need it. And the other thing is we didn't break out the soap buckets and the wheel buckets and a rinse bucket. It's really saving a whole bunch of time and you're also saving money, I think, at the same time. You're not actually using bottles and bottles of spray wax, if that makes sense. So this is quicker, cheaper, and the car looks fantastic, and you're lubricating. You're, you're sort of doing the right thing. I think people have this mentality of pretending it wasn't uh, wet right now, we didn't do this, and there's a bunch of dust on the back. Remember, this is breaking our principles. They'll take a dry microfiber towel, they'll spray it with some spray wax, go through three gallons of spray wax. I'm being, I'm joking. They'll come in, they'll do circles like that, and it's like, oh, it looks clean, but it's a short-term game at a long-term loss. I mean, you're gonna put scratches in there and eventually you keep doing that, you keep doing that, you keep doing that. You're gonna come back one month and go, man, why does it look like garbage here? This is terrible, blah, 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 blah. So doing this little step, which I think is actually quicker, will save you in the long-term. Hopefully that comes across. This is, this is my big, not secret, but my big way of maintaining paint and why I consistently go somewhere or you know, show to, go to a show or just, Go to the, you know, the laundromat, who cares? The car looks spectacular because I spend 15, 20 minutes once a week doing this on a regular maintenance schedule. Again, like cutting the lawn. You don't want to let it get so bad. So anyways, like we did before, fold it into fours. I just wrung it out. Now I'm going to go around here. But I have to show you a cool technique. And for that, we got to pull the camera in. But this is a towel technique to avoid the buildup of dust on the side. All right, so let me show you another cool technique with the hydrate trick. So you have your clean microfiber towel, right? Fold it into fours. And take your hydrate, one or two squirts. Again, it's very viscous. Now, when you're, I'm about to do half this, the, the roof. I'm gonna lay this down. As I lay it down, I'm pulling it across. And at the same time, I'm lifting. So what is that doing? That's making sure that every piece or every, uh, yeah, I guess piece of the microfiber towel here area is the only part that's touching the roof. So what do I mean by that? If I, if I just left it flat like this and wiped it across, what happens is all the dust, the little bit of contaminants here, are all going to line up right along here, right along the edge. So that's going to increase the chance of potentially causing any scratches. Again, we didn't talk about this in the wash portion of it because we already washed the car. There shouldn't really be any contaminants. This one we're pushing the envelope a little bit here. So there's gonna be a few more contaminants because we're doing this sort of trick, right? We're doing the hydrate trick. So to get around that, as you're wiping it, you're rolling it at the same time. Hopefully that concept is coming through where we're not creating just a straight line of dirt. That straight line of dirt could potentially scratch, I think with the water, I think with the hydrate lubrication, I think you're really minimizing that, but let's take, let's go a third step. And just as we're wiping, we're just doing a slow roll. You'll see me just do a little roll so it's not one leading edge kind of crushing it into the paint. So keep that in mind. That's, that's the other aspect of the hydrate trick. Yes, you can do glass with it. 
I typically don't put another squirt on and then do the glass. I use I do the glass when it's when I'm sort of running out of hydrate because it doesn't doesn't really do anything positive for the glass, but it doesn't do anything negative either. So don't waste the hydrate on the glass is what I'm saying. Now, as you can tell after this process, the car looks absolutely stunning. And that's just with 17 minutes, I timed it, 17 minutes of doing the hydrate process. Now, I know a lot of you are asking, hey, what's the difference between doing what we did earlier, which is the cleaning phase, versus this quicker hydrate method? Well, the cleaning phase, you gotta take out the soap, the bucket, the grit guards, et cetera. And it usually takes, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, depending on the size of the car and the amount of dirt that you have. This one here is a maintenance wash, and the hydrate method is what is sort of changed the game for me. So let's break it down. So it took me about roughly 17 minutes we timed it. I did the wheels. Now, before we get too far down, on the edge over there, I wouldn't necessarily break out the buckets and do the wheels. On my car, it's a little different. It's a race car. I have race pads in there. So if I can go from here to that bucket over there and I'll have, I'll have brake dust, so I do it anyways. But on the edge, I wouldn't necessarily do it. So you can cut down some time there. Maybe it goes from 17 to 12 minutes. But I, I so I spent about a minute, a minute and a half on each wheel. Then I rinsed the paint down, I don't know, three, four minutes. And then I dried it down with the hydrate method that goes up to 14, 15 minutes. And then I did ammo mud on each wheel, maybe 30 seconds. So we're talking very, very fast. So if you're thinking, I know there's a lot of people out there saying, hey, why, not we, why don't we just spray wax the car down and wipe it? Okay, I see your point, but there's a couple things that are wrong with that, I think. One, even coming from a manufacturer, you are using a ton of product to do that. That's really not economical. Two, it's not the best amount of lubrication. With a hose, a hose has a lot of pressure and you're blowing off that dust. So there's a couple of things you need to want to think about if you do that. The other concept is when you're using spray wax, the way that I've sort of made my spray wax, if you read it, it says spit emergency shine. What do I mean by that? I leave it in the car all the time, which is tip number two. And I take it out if I'm out on the road at a car show and a bird poos on it. I want to immediately clean that off because it's going to etch through, right? Or I drip gasoline on it or something that's an emergency. I need to clean that up and add lubrication because I'm not at a place that I have a hose. If you have access to a hose, it's so much better than anything else because it's like one of the best lubricants in the world. Spray it and dry it off and then use the microfiber towel, use the hydrate, add another lubricant, and you can see the results are amazing. So all the work that you've just done on your car, you can quickly get back into that same look all the time if you just cut the lawn once a week versus once a month. Does that sort of make sense to you? So anyways, the hydrate method is a game changer. I think you guys are gonna love it. Here are a few additional tips to maintain your fresh detail. Always leave ammo spit and lather interior cleaner in your trunk or armrest to quickly address any spills or accidents that may happen when you're away from home. I also like to leave latex gloves, seat covers, and an emergency blanket in the car as well. The gloves are perfect for everything like checking your oil or cleaning up kid messes in the back. The seat covers are perfect for dropping your car off for service, and trust me, if you have a car seat cover on before you go to the shop, they'll think you're nuts, which is a good thing. Sometimes I like to add a fresh coat of ammo mud tire dressing to the rubber even if I'm not going to wash or use the hydrate method. It's sort of like when a woman goes to the ladies' room to add more lipstick on. It just adds a nice fresh shine before you go out. Next, think about where you park. Do you have to leave it under the tree to get sap, leaves, and dust all over it? Or can you go to the next further spot? What about when you're parking at the mall? Do you get the space closest to the door with everyone else and risk a door ding? Or do you park here and walk an extra 30 seconds to avoid a potential fist fight in the parking lot later? And my favorite trick by far, because it's just so easy, is tapping your feet off before you get into the car. Just make it a habit. Trust me, it'll make you feel so much better every time you get into the car and look down at the floor mat. Clean cars just drive better. Or at least that's what I tell myself. So there you go. This is the bare essentials jam-packed into the shortest video I could possibly create. But I want to be crystal clear. This is by no means an exhaustive list. There are more methods, tools, techniques, products but they don't really fall into the beginner series. They're more advanced and pro. Speaking of the advanced and pro series, if there's anything you wanna see in those videos, email me at training at ammonyc.com with suggestions or ideas or tips, and I'll jam them in that series. Now, a quick reminder, we have a free downloadable PDF, the master guide. Print that out, put it on your wall, and you can clean your car in the driveway, look at it, make sure you can follow along with the methods and procedures. Now, the whole purpose of this video series was to inspire you to get out in the garage and clean your car with confidence 
confidence and I hope we did that today. So as always, thank you so much for watching. This is a lot of fun to create and I hope to see you guys on the next series.